It's particularly fitting that we should start today's event with a piece of music, but not any piece of music. Rather, we begin with a cello work that can be grasped as the lyrical expression of Hassan Diab's 15-year ordeal and still counting. The cello piece you're about to hear is called Ricciacare, and the word Ricciacare refers to a 16th century musical form that means to search or to seek out and like the story of Hassan Diab, which has been marked by an unrelenting search for freedom, Richard Kare embodies the strains and agony of a torturous quest. Hassan's agonizing quest for freedom began when the RCMP brutally seized him from his home on November the 13th, 2008, and arrested him for a crime he did not commit. I repeat, for a crime he did not commit. And on that day, his life was violently upended. The shift in the opening sequence of Raphael's piece captures this sudden reversal of events and the emotions that ensued. Bewilderment over absurd and baseless allegations, horror and anguish in confronting a Kafkaesque nightmare, fury over the malicious sullying of his name, outrage at the malicious judiciaries that betrayed him both here and in France repeatedly. These are among the feelings that racked and ravaged Hassan for years and continue to do so today. In Richard Kari, one can hear this fusion of elements, but one can also discern an intensifying energy of resistance issuing out of that inner turmoil. An energy we know stems from Hassan's moral strength an extraordinary acumen, as well as from the unflagging support that his friends have displayed in abiding by him tirelessly and so long. This staying power, combined with the excellent organizational work of his supporters, including a body of admirable Carlton University students, has strengthened the quest for justice, brought the search to an ever more intense and heightened pitch. So much so that the Hassan case recently became the centerpiece of parliamentary hearings on Canada's vile extradition law. Hassan's story is not only iconic, it is historic, and it will be precedent setting when the quest for his freedom will have been consummated. Richard Curry's ascending force as it wends its way upwards, rising like the phoenix from each setback and attaining its culminating bar triumphantly makes that consummate moment of freedom unmistakably clear. And a final word to MPs and senators who might be listening on the live stream. We, Hassan Diab supporters, are not a scattering of strident demonstrators protesting in front of Parliament Hill in the cold Canadian wind. We are more than that. We are a critical mass, and since 2008, our numbers have swollen. And today we straddle the nation from coast to coast, from St. John's to Victoria. We are everywhere, and we are here. And we demand that you deploy your political powers to prevail on Prime Minister Trudeau and Justice Minister Lametti to ensure that Hassan is not, I repeat, not extradited a second time. And to be clear, Canada need not wait for France's extradition request. It has the legal prerogative to reject such a request in advance and protect its own Canadian citizen from further torment. Say then to Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Lemetti that it behooves them to display political courage and political integrity by standing up to France and by setting Hassan free here and now once and for all.